RuneScape just got a brand new combat beta, and it's mostly focused around the brand new tier 95 dual yield magic weapons that are going to be released with the Sanctum of Rebirth in a couple months time. In order to access the beta, you can follow the link in the description down below, and that'll take you to the RuneScape webpage, where there's a dedicated page going over everything to do with the beta, including how to access it and how to pass your feedback along. Once you log into the beta, there's an NPC you can talk to that has augmenters and a bunch of other things that you'd want for PVM, like unlockable abilities and different types of gear. But most importantly, in the first tab, you've got three different versions of the brand new Tier 95 Magic Dual Wield weapons. And the RuneScape developers want your feedback on which ones are the most enjoyable. I'm saying most enjoyable intentionally because that's included in the news post. They don't want anybody worrying about power level and what is stronger than what, because they are going to tweak the numbers and they can do any amount of balancing as it's needed. But what they want to know is what is the most fun? Which one of these three did you enjoy playing around with the most? So in this video, I'm going to give you my thoughts on all three of the tier 95 weapons, but I would also strongly urge you to make your voice heard if you're interested and play them and try them out on the beta for yourself too. I know sometimes these things can be intimidating and people feel like they need to be a combat expert to have an opinion on anything related to combat, and I think that's a really silly notion. Because at the end of the day, we're all RuneScape players and the opinion of an absolute combat expert isn't more valuable than the opinion of someone who's a little bit more of a casual player. And with that said, why don't we start talking about the first of the three tier 95 weapons. The way the first one works is that anytime you use a non-basic ability, so a threshold, an ultimate, or a special attack, you're going to generate two stacks of Insatiable. These stacks are then used whenever you fire off a basic ability and they do two different things. The first effect is that any basic ability that consumes an insatiable stack will increase your adrenaline gain by 25%. Not in an additive way, but in a multiplicative way. So if you usually get 8% adrenaline for a basic ability, instead, when using up one of these insatiable stacks, you're gonna get 10% adrenaline. This isn't a very massive effect, but it is nice and will give you a little bit more adrenaline to work with when you're using magic. But then the second effect is a lot more powerful and a lot more important. Whenever you consume an insatiable stack by using a basic ability, the cooldown of the wild magic ability is going to go down by 6 seconds. What this means functionally is in your rotation, you're going to want to use wild magic as early as you possibly can. And then from that point, after using wild magic, you're going to have two insatiable stacks. So then what you'll do is you'll use two basic abilities back to back, maybe something like Greater Concentrated Blast and then Dragon Breath. And for each of those basic abilities, the cooldown of wild magic is going to go down by 6 seconds respectively. And just like that, your wild magic ability that you just used is almost available to be fired off again. So the gameplay for this is very simple and consistent. It allows you to use the wild magic ability a lot more than you otherwise would, which is really nice both inside of a sunshine rotation and also outside of a sunshine, where you're just going to be able to thresh a little bit harder and deal a little bit more damage in that downtime. Before I give you my overall thoughts on this effect, I also wanted to mention one other thing, which is that you're going to notice I'm using the Fractured Staff of Armadal special attack from inside of an Essence of Finality. The reason I'm doing this is because inside of the beta, all three of the tier 95 sets have the charging effect on it, which means when you first equip the tier 95 duels, you have to wait nine seconds before any of the effects begin to work. This applies to all three of the weapons, and I want people to not panic about this, because I don't believe that the final weapons are going to end up having charging on them. So if you want to use a Fractured Staff of Armadal special and then put on your duels, you should be able to do that. With that disclaimer out of the way, here's what I think of the first weapon. After trying this out at a couple different bosses and training dummies, I found this to be pretty fun. It's pretty simple and easy to understand, and something I really liked about this when compared to some of the other ones later on is it didn't really require any real scanning. For some of the future effects, I found the entire time I just had to stare at my action bar to see if I was going to immediately get an ability reset, but for this one, you know exactly what you're getting, and it's very, very easy to plan around when you're making a rotation. I found it satisfying to get to use wild magic a whole lot more often, and I like the consistency as well, because these days rotations can be pretty all over the place, where depending on your adrenaline or what procs you get of other things, you need to modify it a lot and adapt on the fly. For a game like RuneScape where I might be grinding the same boss for 100 hours in a row, I like the idea of having certain aspects of my rotation that I can rely upon and are consistent. But overall, I don't think this first effect is terribly imaginative. It's pretty simple, you get a little bit of extra adrenaline that you may or may not be able to use, and outside of that, you're using wild magic a whole lot more often, and that becomes the backbone of your rotation. I don't personally think that these tier 95s need to have a crazy complicated special attack, and sometimes simple is better, but this is still pretty simple, and overall, I'm going to give this first effect a 7 out of 10. Now let's take a look at the second option. This is extremely similar to the first one, where you get the exact same situation with non-basic abilities generating two stacks of Insatiable, and then basic abilities consuming Insatiable just like before. The first of the two effects is exactly the same as in the other set, so you're going to gain a little bit of extra adrenaline whenever you're consuming a stack of Insatiable. But then the second effect is a little bit different. 
This time around, instead of reducing the cooldown of Wild Magic, using an Insatiable stack has a 35% chance to instantly refresh the cooldown of Wild Magic. Doing the math on this, it ends up being exactly the same amount of overall Wild Magics, and your preference of these two options is gonna depend on if you want something consistent where you're constantly Wild Magicking more often than before, or if you want something with some randomness to it, where if you're lucky, you'll be able to go Wild Magic ability, Wild Magic ability, Wild Magic ability. But at the same time, if you're unlucky, you could have a regular Sunshine rotation where you don't get your Wild Magic cooldown reset a single time. I didn't really think I was going to enjoy this, but in testing it out on dummies, I actually thought it was quite fun to get these random procs and these random effects that instantly let me use wild magic right after. It felt kind of like getting a relentless proc in a way that I really enjoyed. Even though this was really fun to use on a dummy, and the dopamine went absolutely crazy when my wild magic continually reset, in an actual boss fight, I didn't like it nearly as much. The first concern was scanning and brain bloat, because in order to get the most out of this, you kind of have to constantly monitor your wild magic cooldown, which meant instead of looking at the boss fight and the visuals and the mechanics, I was instead focused just about entirely on that wild magic cooldown so that whenever it got reset, I could use it again. And because of this, if this option came into the game, I think it really needs to have a great sound and a lot of visual clarity whenever you get a cooldown reset. If it's a situation where the best way to know if your wild magic cooldown got reset is to stare at your action bar constantly, that's not very fun at all. The other thing I'm going to talk about here is consistency, and this is very much personal preference. But for me, even though I had a ton of fun at dummies messing around with this and spamming wild magic every second ability whenever I got lucky, at an actual boss fight like Zamrock, I much preferred one to two, because my rotation was consistent and so was my damage. Variability in damage can be a good thing or a bad thing depending on how you personally feel about PVMing, but for me, I didn't like the moments where I didn't have enough damage to deal with a mechanic or I'd miss a phase point, not because I did something wrong, but because I was unlucky on procs. Because of this, over Overall, I'm also going to give this second effect a 7 out of 10. It's no more imaginative than the first one, but I'm going to very slightly give the edge to the first effect. Of these two options, option 1 is my preference. The first two effects were very similar, but the third one is completely different. Let's go over what it does now. The description of it states, an alternative playstyle of increasing damage over time effects that ramps up in power the more you stack this new debuff and adds effects like refreshing their cooldowns or making them hit instantly. So let's get into what that means. For starters, whenever you're using this wand and orb, damage over time abilities are going to deal 30% more damage, so when you're using Combust or Corruption Blast, you're going to be hitting significantly harder with them. In addition to this, whenever you're using damage over time abilities, they're going to generate an Essence Corruption, which stacks up from 1 all the way to 100. In a prolonged boss fight, these stacks don't diminish at any point, so you're going to start with a low amount, and by the middling point of the boss fight, you're going to be on 100 stacks, and you're going to stay on 100 for the remainder of the fight. When you have one or more Essence Corruption stack, your damage over time abilities have a 30% chance to empower, which is going to deal the damage instantly and instantly refresh the cooldown. As an example, in this clip, my Combust reset itself three times in a row. So I press Combust, you see all of the hit splats appear at the same time, and the cooldown is reset. So I was able to just spam the Combust ability three times in a row, back to back to back. Now, there's an effect with Combust where if your target walks, it deals double damage. If your Combust instantly empowers, you're not going to have a chance to walk your target. So what you need to do is anytime you use Combust, you'd have to instantly click underneath your target to force walk it at the exact same time. If you don't do this, you'll be losing out on half of your damage. From a gameplay standpoint, I don't like this so much, and I think it wouldn't be a bad idea to count the Combust as walked no matter what when it activates with this empowerment. This is because a lot of bosses can't move at all, so you're just missing out on a ton of damage there. And in addition, for any kind of group content or even in a solo fight, having to constantly move the boss around the room just in case your Combust empowers so that you don't miss out on bonus damage doesn't sound terribly fun to me. Now let's look at the next effect. When you've got 25 Essence Corruption stacks or more, you're going to deal bonus damage against your target. It's going to be 100% of your stacks plus 100% of your magic level. What this means is it's a very small amount of bonus damage that's going to be added to every hit. This also plays into the theme of a bleed build and a damage over time build, because the abilities that benefit the most from this are going to be the abilities that are small and hit a lot of different times, so something like Combust, Corruption, and also Magma Tempest would fit into this category. Last but not least, at 50 Essence Corruption stacks, basic abilities are going to generate an extra 3.6 Adrenaline over 6 seconds, so you're going to get a little bit of extra Adrenaline over time while you're PDMing. Option 3 is by far the most imaginative. It actually changes the way you play the game, and it messes with a number of different abilities that are seldom used, especially in PVM. But there are a lot of problems I have with version 3, and I'm going to go through them right now. The first thing I'm going to mention is there's a huge anti-synergy between this dual wield set and Sunshine, because bleeds are not buffed at all by Sunshine. So effectively, if you want to benefit from this wand and this orb passive, you need to use bleeds. But in a Sunshine, it's better to not use bleeds. At a certain point, you're going to have to pick and choose what you want to use, but either way, it's not terribly optimal. 
In addition to this, bleeds just don't work in group PVM, because if one person uses a bleed and then another player uses the same bleed, the new player's bleed is gonna completely override and null the damage of the first player. Because of this, in group PVM, bleeds are completely and utterly broken, and they're significantly worse. So if you want to make the most of this thing, I hope you don't have any friends to PVM with who also want to use magic. In addition to this, bleeds in general are just not that good. Their damage isn't boosted by perks like Precise Interruptive, and they also can't crit. But more than that, there are a bunch of things that are just fundamentally wrong with bleeds, where in their combat coding, they don't work the way you'd think they would. A good example of this is stat-boosting prayers like Ruination just don't boost the damage bleeds can deal at all. Because of all these different factors that just make bleeds generally not good, bleeds end up kind of being a bit of a filler ability. So effectively, what this option does is it resets the cooldown and instantly pops filler ability so that you can continue using that filler ability over and over again. But the abilities that are being reset just don't synergize with anything and aren't that good. This makes me pretty sad because this third option is by far the most interesting and the most fun from a gameplay standpoint, but it's completely and utterly held back and unfeasible in my opinion because of the way bleeds are designed. If this option comes into the game without completely changing how bleeds are coded and completely changing how they work and how they're balanced, this option just isn't going to be good at all. Because of that, I'm going to give the idea an 8 out of 10, but in actuality and in their actual function, this is a 3 out of 10 for me. I just don't think we should be doing bleed builds or leaning into bleeds while they can continue to not work correctly. So anyway, those are my thoughts on the three tier 95 dual wield magic options. And overall, if I had to pick a favorite, I'm going with option one, which consistently reduces the cooldown of wild magic to let you use it a little bit more often. That being said, now it's time for me to pass the question off to you guys. What do you think? What's your favorite? And last but not least, what do you think about them doing combat betas for things like this, for future content that hasn't come out yet? With all that said, thank you all so much for watching this video, and I'll see you again very soon for the next one.